All right, what's up, everybody? Sorry, I am obviously joining from my car today. I was going to try to make it inside of Starbucks, but ended up I am in the Starbucks parking lot. But we're going to do this either way. So hope you guys are doing awesome today. Uh, we're going to do some live training here. So first off, if you can just say hello in chat, let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. And then we will jump in and get started. Awesome. Hello, Amanda. Let me make sure my microphone is connected correctly here. One second. carries a few more scars. All right. Hope you guys are having an awesome, what is today? Tuesday. Good start to the week. I know it's been going fast over here and if it's going fast to you. So typically how we do these is normally in the beginning, I do a little bit of uh, training on features within Genie Rocket and show you some new things that are coming up or some tactics. Uh, before I do that, I want to change it a little bit today and ask you guys that are on here live if there's anything specific that you are working on or have questions on. So we're going to do Q&A first to see if there's anything that you guys would like to um, get answers to. And then if there's none, I'll jump right into some neat Genie Rocket things inside of the software itself. So go ahead and chat. Um, if you have any specific questions of things that you're working on or things that you'd like to go over, this is this is your time to ask and get live answers here while I get my Genie Rocket account pulled up here. And again, if there's none, I'm going to share my screen and we will go right into some of the new fun things. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, cool. Um, great, any new information? You got it, Amanda. Um, so there's a couple new things that make it a little bit easier. So one of the things, especially, I see a few drip bar folks on here. One of the things, if, if you are doing mass emails or texting, I'm gonna walk through real quick how to create what's called a smart list and then how to use dynamic fields to send out personalized messages. So if you need to send out a large text or a large email to a big group of people, how you organize that group in a very specific way, and then some of the best practices to actually send out that mass text or mass email and pull uh, individual contact information and do it the right way. So the very first step there, is make sure, so when you click on contacts over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see all your contacts with all your tags and all the different spots. And if you notice up here at the top, I have a few categories in here. So where it says interested or coaches or Facebook leads, lead, these are all called smart lists. And you can have unlimited amount of smart lists. And a smart list is simply a filter view of all of your contacts. So we always start with clicking on all and seeing everyone in the list. And then we're gonna click on more filters here on the right. And then we're gonna start using these filters to create a smart list. So for example, if I type in the word tag, we might say the tag is, and then we're gonna drop down and choose one of the tags we've already added in here. So if you already have a tag, for example, on drip bar, it might be a tag of the marketing vendor you're working with, if they have the tag of that, or if they have um, were a walk-in, or they come from a came from a certain event, or they filled out a website form, you can use those as tags. And then we're simply going to click save as smart list on the bottom. And then we're going to give that a name so we can quickly find it later. So for this example, we just use the tag of airport. So I'm going to call this smart list airport and save it. And then you'll notice I now have a smart list that is going to always show me people that have this tag. And at any point in time, I can go in here and modify it. I can say if the tag is this and it's also any of these other tags, or I might say it could, the tag is that or they have this certain business name or 
they're assigned to this lead owner. So you can create a, a lots of different types of tags or lots of different types of filters. And those filters will help you quickly recall people that have that certain parameter. So for example, here, this is just a test account. So we'll see if we have any smart list here that have a couple contacts in here. All right, let's just say, so interested. So if we have everyone that has the tag of interested, let's say we've got lots of people in there, we simply can click right here to select all. You'll notice at the very top, it will say how many you've selected. So if you have multiple pages of contacts in here, there's gonna be an option that says select all. That select all is gonna let you select everyone inside of that smart list. And then at the very top, this menu bar right here is gonna let you choose an action that you want to perform on that smart list. So for example, if we wanted to send a text message to everyone in the smart list, we would simply hover over the send SMS button, choose that. This is just gonna show us um, that it's gonna go out quickly, but it's gonna go out over a, a period of time. So it might take a few minutes depending on how big your list is. So we're gonna hit okay. And then this is where we are going to compose our message. So you have your editor right here. So you're just gonna start typing your message. And then a couple things I wanna to bring to your attention. Over on the right hand side, we have this tag icon. When you click that, this is where you can pull in dynamic fields. So if we wanna pull their first name, their full name, their last name, their email, their phone, or if we wanna you know, pull in any of this other information, you can. Typically what we find most useful is the contact category with the first name, especially in a text. So if we want to say, hi, first name, you want to write your message. And then let's say you want to add a little emoji. So we can just do that right here in this emoji icon. And then you can also add attachments. So if you've got a special coming up or a promotion or an event, and you want to add a little more personality to your SMS campaign and to your text, that's a great place where you could go ahead and add in an attachment. Now, you do want to be careful that it's not a really large size attachment because that's actually going to cost you a little bit more. The bigger file size you send, the more it's going to cost to send that message. And if it is a larger file size, it might not load very quickly on the SMS message. So you want to make sure when you're sending attachments on text, that they are an optimized size. So make sure it's a small file size. It's not a big document or a big download or else that's gonna cost you more money and it's gonna take longer for the client or customer to receive. So it could, could be a bad user experience. So we're gonna, that is how you add the attachment. And then you'll notice you've got three options down here. You can say, I wanna send all of these at once. Um, I wanna send them all at a scheduled time in the future or I want to send in drip mode. If you've got a small list and you're working on doing a promotion or an offer and you just want to send it all out quickly, I recommend doing the send all at once. If you are trying to, if you are up early in the morning or late at night or outside of business hours and you want this to go out at a very specific time, that's when you're going to choose send out a scheduled time and then this start on category will appear and you'll be able to choose the selected date and time you'd like those messages to go out. If you choose to send in drip mode, this is great if you have a non-urgent, non-important message going out to a large list. This will drip it out over time. So it doesn't, it doesn't really um, cost as much. It kind of spreads out the cost over a little bit of time and it makes it where it can just send a little bit easier. It doesn't clog the pipeline of trying to send a lot of messages all at the same time and causing any issues. And that's where you can say we want to start on this date i want to send it out in batches of quantity so 25 50 100 um, repeat after x amount of days hours minutes seconds and then send on a certain day start from in that so you can get really specific and again i've only used this a couple times so for the majority of the time probably 85 to 90 percent i would recommend uh, send all at once because it's naturally going to send them out at the right cadence. They're not gonna be immediately landed, but over the next 10, 15, 20 minutes, they're gonna send out as soon as possible. Or 
if you're up early in the morning or late at night and you want this to go out during business hours, that's where you would choose send schedule time. Um, once you do that, it is going to ask you for this right here where it says action. That is just an internal note. So what that means is whenever we go to bulk actions, this is going to give us a list of all of the all of the texts we've sent, the emails we've sent, all the actions we've performed. And where it says name and bulk operation, that's where it's going to show the note that you put in. So this is just really helpful. If you're sending out a promotional offer or a campaign, it's just a reminder of what campaign you did. Instead of it just saying SMS to 450 people, it's going to say SMS name of campaign to 450 people. And that way, when you go back and check statistics, you can know how successful it was and it's attributed back to whatever campaign you sent. So that is kind of a, a 101. It's one of the fundamentals, but it's a really important thing to know how to do is create that smart list and then how to do bulk texting and bulk emailing. Same thing's possible or the exact same way on email where you select all, choose email, hit OK, proceed. Exact same thing applies. You have access to um, write the emails, add in the custom values for contact information, and then send at once, send at scheduled time, or send in drip mode. Um, so that is how you schedule and send and organize really great campaigns. Now, if you have a longer cycle of promoting an offer or campaign, I'm gonna show you what I actually recommend. These are great for quick one-offs, right? If you've got no time, it's a quick one and done pop. That is the quickest way to send out offers. And it's kind of a good you know, fallback of like, oh my gosh, this thing is starting or I forgot to get this out and I just need to get it out quickly. Um, what I highly recommend is instead of just doing those one-off mass text or emails is actually creating a workflow with a couple texts or a couple emails and then adding your smart list to that workflow. And as I'm going through this too, if you guys have any questions, um, I know we asked at the beginning, we've got a few more people that jumped on. If you have any questions during this, please just throw them in chat and I will get to them as I can. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna keep teaching here. So if you have anything in particular you want to uh, know about or learn, just throw it in the chat. So let's say we wanted to do an offer for, let's see if I can pick on on here. Okay, let's see. So. So Hannah with Canine Academy, let's say Hannah is doing a promotional offer for the new year of, hey, if you've been, if, if you have a, a dog and you're finally ready to get it in the right mindset to be the, the best dog you've ever had that is well behaved, that you're not embarrassed to take out, that won't attack your uh, neighbors or strangers, and that you get compliments on constantly, then we're doing a new year special where you can bring in your dog for a free consultation evaluation. It's normally X. This week only, we're doing it for Y for the next 15 people. And so we used a little bit of scarcity, urgency there, solving a problem for a real person. And so what we would do in that case is if we just sent out one text, that might get some results. But imagine the power if we sent out four or five and it was a combination of a text, an email, and a ringless voicemail drop that over three or four days, this per person is getting reminded. And we all need to remember as marketers or entrepreneurs, you guys have to be the chief reminding officers. If people hear it once, if they don't buy or take action, that's not because they don't necessarily want the product or service you're offering, but it takes a lot of us six, seven, eight touch points before we make a decision. And if you think back to any purchasing decision you've made, you would probably agree it's taken about that many times unless you were in so much pain for, with a problem and that solution was right there in front of you. So let me stop talking and I will jump in on how to execute that. So we're gonna jump into automations that will be on the left-hand side. And Hannah, I do see your question there, so let me Go jump into that here in just a second. Um, after we're in automations and we're in workflows, we're simply going to click on create workflow. We're going to choose start from scratch. And this is our canvas to build out the workflow that we're going to be applying 
to a group of people. So I'm just going to use generic names and kind of quick typing here just to give you the basic concept and show you how it works. So we're just going to call this promo. We are not going to add a trigger. A trigger means if someone does something or has a certain tag, then they're automatically going to get this workflow. Instead, we are going to um, leave this trigger blank and then apply this workflow to the people we want it to go to. So the first thing we're do is we're just going to click this plus button and we are going to say send email. And guess what? Super easy. You just get to type in the email that you want to show up here. So who is who it's from, the from email, the subject line, and of course the message right here. Um, our editor got a little bit of an upgrade, so you might notice this looks a little bit different. So you can see right here, the tag icon is now on the left-hand side. So if I were to do contact first name, boom, right here, I'm going to type the message. You can add attachments. You can do a test email. And then we have that. You can also change the name up here. So if I just want to call this like email one, save it here. And then I can do the same thing with a text. So I can then say send a text message. And I'm going to apply that message right here, hit save. So as soon as someone gets on this workflow, they're going to get an email and a text. Then if I type in the word wait, or I scroll to the very bottom, we're going to add in a wait step. So we might say we're going to wait one day. I'm going to change this up here too, so I don't forget the name. So wait one day. And then we've got a text, or I'm sorry, an email, a text, a one day wait step. And then I'm simply going to copy this. So I just click those three dots, copy, copy action, copy here. Same for the text, copy, copy action, copy here. And the wait step, copy, copy action, copy here. And I can start to build out this series of text and emails that are talking about the same topic. They're just reminding people about what you have going on. The other thing I mentioned was a ringless voicemail drop. So you can see here, actually easier if I just type this out because we've got a lot of options here. If you type in the word voicemail, you'll see voicemail. All you have to do here is upload an MP3 of your voice or whatever you choose, and that will automatically try to bypass the ring to your contacts and go straight to a voicemail. What happens if someone answers it in the middle of a ring? They're going to get the voicemail. It's going to start playing the MP3, and that's okay. You're not trying to trick or fake people. I've even done this where I have used ringless voicemail drop and said, hey, this is this is Brad. This is just a recording, but I wanted you to hear my voice to invite you to this event. So we're not trying to fake people out just like AI. We're not always trying to psych people of, hey, is this real or not? We're simply trying to leverage technology and have multiple touch points. So imagine the power if someone sees you in an email, gets a text, they show up on your phone as a voicemail, there's multiple touch points reminding you about one specific thing as opposed to just one text or one email. Once that's done, you're going to move it from draft to published and hit save. Once that is done, again, this is just all in a demo account, you can come back to whichever contacts you want to put them put that workflow through to. We're going to choose select all 226 records. This is an important step. We're then going to choose the robot head to add to campaign slash workflow. Once we hit that, we're going to hit the OK button, and then we are going to choose the workflow we just created. So make sure you remember what that was called. So this was called promo. So we're going to choose the promo workflow. We're going to add all at once, and we're going to create that action that's going to be for the tracking report. And we're simply going to hit add to campaign workflow. Once you do that, every single person on your smart list or in your contact list is going to go through those steps that are immediately going to get all a text, all an email. It's going to wait two days. Then they're all going to get another text, another email, and a voicemail drop. One thing I didn't show you that's nice, and then hand I'll get to your question, is inside the automations, once we have that built, If we go under settings, we can also say stop on response. 
What this means, if someone replies back to that email or to that text inside of that workflow, it's going to immediately stop the workflow. So if someone gets a text and they say, yep, I'm interested, sign me up, can you give me a call? They are no longer going to get the nurturing sequence in that workflow. Then it's up to Hannah to call them or to follow up with them and take the next step. But as soon as they reply back, whether it says stop or whether it says help or whether it says uh, take my money and sign me up, whatever it is, they are going to eliminate the flow of that workflow. And it's your responsibility now to take on that conversation. But it gives you the confidence to know they're not going to be bombarded with more messaging about that offer if they're asking or inquiring about it. So hopefully that all makes sense. If you guys could throw up maybe just a one in comments, let me know if, if that made sense or if there's extra questions you need clarifying. Um, that is how you create a workflow and you can do it pretty quickly. You guys saw how fast I put that together, but you can create a workflow, enroll people into that workflow and have multiple texts, emails, ringless voicemail drops. You can also do things like um, add tags to people, have it send a text to you. Um, you, can, you can play around with it. It's like a big bunch of Lego bricks, but this is the simplest use case for it. All right, Hannah has a question. Um, subscriptions, change her card. Yep, so Hannah, if they need to change their card, the easiest way to do that would do it uh, directly into, into Stripe. So if it was an expired subscription, um, sometimes they can get a link to, ch they can change it themselves in Stripe. Other times you might have to call them and inside of your Stripe dashboard, there's a way that you can add a new card and delete an old card. Um, and you can do that. Something that we've done is we actually created a landing page in Genie Rocket that asks for all the card information. So we just send them a link to that page. And when it fills it out, we get notified and we manually go in and change that card. So it makes it easy on them. Um, so that is that is one thing you could do is just create a real simple form. And I think all Stripe asks for is full name, um, the, C, the, yeah, the three digit code or four digit code and the expiration date. I don't think it needs an address, but those are a couple options. But yeah, that is held directly inside of Stripe. Um, there are a lot more integrations coming. Like right now, you can actually click on a contact and see all the purchases they've made. You can charge the card directly. You can refund them. So I think probably adding or updating a card will be coming soon. But right now, that'd be directly in Stripe. Yes, I do too. That is a great feature. And just to kind of show you an example of um, what I'm talking about that we built, you can feel free to copy this. I think this is right. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, so we just made Hannah this real simple page. Have your card securely on file for approved usage. Card number, security number, name on card, expiration date, postal code. That's it. So we built this in like five minutes or less. Um, and we just send this link to our clients. So if they say, hey, I need to give you a new card on file. Um, this doesn't charge them. This is just a contact form. And it allows them to put it in so you don't have to try to write it on a scrap of paper while <laughs> you're on the phone. Um, and it's a lot easier to read. Cool. And then opting in, should I be getting it? Should I be putting an opt out section? So what's neat is because of the rules of texting, that's a great question. Hannah asked about if she needed to be putting opt out language into all of her texts and emails. By default, that is automatically turned on. And whenever you send out a brand new message to anyone, it will automatically have at the bottom, say, reply stop to opt out. And so if you go into your settings and business info, we can actually see. Oh, yeah. So by default, you can see right here, it says make SMS compliant by adding an opt out message, which just says reply stop to unsubscribe. Um, so this by default is turned on and I believe that's the same on email. So that just makes you compliant. Yes. And Hannah, you know, it, Hannah, is it okay if, if I pull up your account live right now so I could look at something with you? Cool. And sorry, my camera uh, is going to be a little awkward and weird as I'm sitting in my Jeep trying to do this. Okay, so we're going to pull up Canon Academy. I think maybe, Hannah, since you were on Genie Rocket before that um, default was in place, we might have actually created a workflow that says if someone says stop automatically, 
do this. So we, we might be able to turn that off. I'm just going to look here real quick at your automations. See if that is in here anywhere. Stop. Completed. Okay, land line. Okay, let me go to your settings here real quick. And guys, just so you know, this is this is the kind of stuff that these sessions are made for. So feel free to come with your specific questions and with your permission, like I just asked Hannah, I'll pull up your account because we can all be learning stuff from each other as we're trying to figure, or as you're trying to figure out how to use this best for your business. Okay, so right here, Hannah, where it says make SMS compliant, we can hit customize. So you can you can decide one of these keywords you'd like to use. So maybe thinking about one that isn't gonna be common in a message if you want it to be, you know, stop or stop all or unsubscribe, cancel, end, or quit. Um, and I'm happy to change that for you. Or if you if you go into business info and customize, um, yep. Hopefully, no one would say stop all in a normal conversation. That'd be a little bit weird. <laughs> so reply stop all to unsubscribe. Cool. Okay, and that's just for text. So the only thing that we'll need to look at is it does say initial message needs to include one of the following standard opt-out keywords. So stop, stop all, unsubscribe. So I'm wondering if the person that said stop, did they use stop all in all caps or did they just say stop normal caps? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, let me let me find out for sure if there's a way to make it where stop in general doesn't unsubscribe. Um, I think that should fix it, but I will double check because that'd be that'd be great to know. I know I know text compliance has gotten really finicky lately with the amount of spammers out there. And that's why too, if you guys have ever been caught in that loop of the 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 phone call, like when you set up a new phone number, you have to do all that uh, compliance stuff. That's not something that we have in place. That's something that the phone providers have in place to, to actually protect you um, and protect your clients and customers from getting constant spam. I've had people that have signed up for Genie Rocket and they they were spammers. They uploaded a list of a thousand plus people. Um, they would give phishing messages and spamming messages. And luckily a lot of those didn't go out even though they tried because of the compliance regulations. So it prevents people from doing all that spam, which means the quality that's coming through is going to be a lot, a lot higher quality messaging, which is what you're sending out to people. Yep, emails are also cracking down. Yep, that's a good good point, Hannah. So, um, good to have links and emails so that are more likely to be opened. Yeah, so make sure you put links and emails, and make sure that you have good high value content with good subject lines. Because the more that your emails get opened and the more your emails get clicked is the more likely they're going to be continue to have great delivery moving forward. And since Hannah brought that up, I'm going to show you guys to a quick way. And if I know there's a, a few drip bar folks on here. So I think drip bar is handling this for you with um, Louie, the director of marketing. I think he's, he knows this is, is aware of this and he's going to help you. But if you're not drip bar, you can actually go into, hey, what do you know right here? When you click on email services, um, you will get this notification about how to boost your email deliverability. So you can, this is, this is a little bit of, um, takes a little bit of time. This doesn't, I was going to say it's a little bit of cost. There's a separate thing that's a cost, but this is actually free, I believe. So you can you can link in your own domain. So if Hannah from Canine Academy wants to use her domain name 
as the sending domain for email, by default, it uses one that we have set up, a shared domain uh, that is mail.genierocket.com. If you want to use mail.canineacademy, yep. So you could use mail.wahcanineacademy.com for the sending server. Um, you can set that up, and it's it's not a whole lot of steps, but it will it will improve your deliverability and it will improve your brand awareness and brand trust. And so all you have to do is click on email services, um, choose the dedicated domain and IP. And then you are simply going to hit the add dedicated domain. And so what Hannah would do here is she would do, I'm going to try to copy this real quick. She would just do something like mail.wahk9academy.com. Um, And then follow these instructions. So this is, you don't want to put your main domain in here. You need, this is what's called a subdomain. So you want to, you want to have that mail dot or a word dot in front of that. So if she wanted to do that, she could hit add and verify and then follow those steps. Again, it's a couple steps, but what that's going to do is it's going to make it where you're sending out email through your own sending domain. And it gives you a little bit, um, better deliverability and then you can read all this content over here too and, and a help center um but that's gonna that's gonna help you with some of your sending oh we just we just opened up a little can of email worms there all right guys what are the questions do you have for me i'm happy to be on here if you have anything you're are you guys working on anything right now for promotion of an event of a campaign Anything you're wondering, like, hey, is it possible to do this with Genie Rocket? There are no bad questions. That's why I am here. And what you guys are thinking. I'll see if there's anything else exciting coming up. Oh, one neat thing. What you guys are, are maybe thinking of a question is we have a brand new feature with email marketing. And Hannah, I'm going to keep using your account if that's okay. Um, when you send, actually, I'm going to switch to mine because I've got some campaigns in here. If you guys ever have a page on your site that collects revenue, which Hannah, I think you do, and you want to send people to that page from email, you can now track revenue from email as a email marketing metric. So let's say Hannah has an event coming up or she's introducing um, a paid consultation for dog training and she sends out a really nice looking email marketing campaign with pictures and graphics and a cool story if they click that link and that goes to the page and they end up purchasing whether it's right then or if they come back you know two or three days later it's going to attribute that revenue sale and that conversion to that email so now hannah can go back and say this email generated me X amount of dollars, which is really, really stinking cool. So if you think about the return on investment of email, it still has the highest ROI out of any sort of marketing. And now you can actually track revenue dollars if you're selling a product or service and collecting money online through Genie Rocket, um, you can track that all towards an email. So if, and truthfully, I haven't done this yet. The feature is there but I haven't done it, but I'll show you um, where the metrics are. So if we go into emails and campaigns, and then this is my favorite button, by the way, guys, if you use this a lot, we, we have this recent button that's almost on all of our different categories. So if you're like, I've got way too many folders and files and all these things, um, recent shows you the most recently used, aptly titled. So if I look at this newsletter I sent out on the 12th, then I can go into statistics and load more statistics. And so this shows some really neat stuff here. So this shows 
how many emails were sent. So it's so successfully delivered 98.67, almost had a 30% open rate, a 1% click-through rate. And this new one is conversion. So if Hannah was selling a product or a service on here, she could see how many of those people turned into a sale. And even cooler, um, she can see revenue generated or revenue per receipt all right there. So she can come back to that at any time and see how much money that email made her. And then what's neat too is you can change those statistics um, you know, into numbers instead of percentages. Uh, but the reporting on here is great. So that is one, one new metric that you can measure with email marketing if you're selling a product or service. And if you've never sold a product or service uh, from email marketing before, I recommend giving it a try. There is no easy button in sales or marketing, but the more that you do, you can figure out what works for you and what generates revenue and helps you move that bottom line. All right, what else, guys? What would you like to see? What questions do you have? Things you'd like to see? Remember too, if you guys do um, get stuck on here, we do have that support library link on the left-hand side that is a really robust and great library. So if it is middle of the night and you're like, dang it, how do I do X? You can go here and search and it will more than likely show up. Or if you want to just talk to a real human, 24-7 live chat support here. You just click on get help, chat with an agent, and within minutes, uh, we have got at least 10 people on there right now manning chat. Um, and then also, if you want to schedule Zoom with somebody, and I'll get to your question here in a second, Hannah, on the bottom left, we have a schedule Zoom link, and it goes right to the calendar. So we have uh, senior technicians, at least five of them on here, ready to talk to you. Um, and like sometimes it's a day or two out because it is live Zoom chat. Uh, so, you know, you can book for tomorrow and there's all these opening spots. So if you ever need some one-on-one -on -one tech support, that's a great place to do it. Hannah says for online community, does it allow live videos inside of Zoom and add link there? Um, so, I believe so. Let me let me open it up and show you what you can do. So if you guys haven't used communities, holy cow, it's awesome. We're still exploring the power of it, uh, but you can have unlimited communities that are basically like private Facebook groups. And we get new functionality in here almost daily. So like now, Hannah, um, we actually have it where you can you can use an at everyone comment and it will alert everybody in your group so for example this morning um i posted this and i use this at everyone tag and everyone 517 people got emails with this message in there and so your question was on videos does it allow live videos so whenever you post a video let me find a good example here um, you can do a couple things. So you can add a video through like a uh, YouTube, Vimeo, or Loom link. So if you have that uh, link in here from YouTube video or Loom, you can just put it in here and it'll pull in it. Or if it is like Zoom or something else like an MP4 file, you can just upload it here. And it uploads pretty quickly. And then once that's done, it's gonna look like this and people can just play it. So this is like a YouTube link, for example. So this is gonna take people, it, not to YouTube, it's just gonna embed it, but it's gonna give them a good viewing experience right inside of there. And I think Loom just got added today. So that is um, how you can add that video, either just directly through uploading the file Oh, yeah. And so, and if you, yep. So that emailed them from the post. Yep. So if I use at everyone, it's going to automatically send them an email and say, you've been tagged in a comment. And when they click that, it's going to go right back to that post I made. Um, yeah. If you wanted to host live Q and A like this, 
yeah, you would probably want to use Zoom. We don't have um, live calls in here. I think that's probably going to be coming very soon. I know that would be a game changer. I hope it's coming very soon. So I would recommend something like, yeah, Zoom, or we use this platform called Dimeo or something else for now, and then just posting the replays back in here. And you can post those replays like a video right here, or what's neat is it ties directly into your um, courses. So you can decide which course you want that community to have access to. So all of our BAM live trainings, for example, if someone wants to log in here, they get access to all of our pre-recorded or sorry, replays of BAMs. And so if they click in on one of these, you know, they can then access this from here and then they can scroll through just like a normal course, watch all of these courses. So if you're creating a course, you can now tie those courses directly into your groups. And then to, to set up any of this on the left-hand side is just course builder and we're in community. So it's easy to create a group in a community. You can see we've got lots of them. You can have unlimited groups, invite people to them. You can even monetize the group. So you can make make a paywall to say it's like, for example, we've got a paid mastermind. So if people pay $97 a month, they can be a part of our mastermind group. Um, and that's all really easy to set up. And then if you need to add additional courses, you can just go under courses and products here. And you can see, for example, here is our BAM course. And all I have to do is click on this plus add a lesson, give it a title, and then it's going to have me upload the video, write some content, publish it, and boom, it automatically appears on that courses piece. So I know that's a lot of steps, but I'd rather give you guys too much information and kind of show you behind the scenes how it's done. And then just like always, you'll get a replay of this, which is something good, Hannah, you might like about Dimeo is it automatically does send out replays. Um, and we do have an affiliate with Dimeo. So if you do decide to sign up, um, let me grab my affiliate code for you to use. Uh, we've been using it for a few years and really do like it. If you already have Zoom and you love Zoom, um, use that. And if you want to try out Dimeo, I would highly appreciate you use my Dimeo referral code. Uh, it just helps me out a little bit. So if you are interested in trying out a demo of Dimeo, which is this platform. It's great. All right. What are the questions you guys have? We've got a little bit more time here. If there's anything I can help you with. Um, if you're someone like Hannah that's trying to build a community, um, guys, definitely look into this. Facebook groups. If you have a Facebook group, um, you are building your business and your audience on rented land that could all go away. That is a Facebook group. When you build a community on, even though you're building it on the Genie Rocket platform, it's your colors, it's your brand, it's your domain. Genie Rocket is just the technology behind it. But when people log in, for example, to this, look, so the URL at the top is academy.genierocket.com. This could be academy k9academy.com, right? It can be your brand. It's your logos. It doesn't say Genie Rocket anywhere on here. When someone does a group on Facebook, they're in the Facebook ecosystem. They're seeing Facebook ads. They're getting bombarded with Facebook. And it just happens to be where you put out your content. But if you can get people into your group, like we have 517 members in here. If you can get people into your group, post your content, um, get people to engage, then you're creating a community that is your brand. And guess what? When people come in here and they sign up to be a part of your community, they automatically get added as a contact in your CRM and they can get nurtured and they can go through that, that whole process. Um, so it, I know it's not for everybody, but if you have ever thought about doing a Facebook group, I want you to rethink that and think about building a Genie Rocket community. And with just in literally a few minutes, you can spin up a new community. I mean, check out how easy this is. If I go to Course Builder, Communities and Groups, I can say Create Group. 
group name, new group. That's the name. Write in your description. Uh, brand color, put in whatever your brand color is. Um, if you want it, you, you can come back and do this later for your logo, your cover image, all that. Create group. Boom, look at this. I have a brand new group called new group. Even though it doesn't look beautiful, um, it's a new group. And then this is really important here too. So check this out. I go back into settings. I can change this to be public or private. If it's private, um, people have to apply to join it. I can make it a free group. Or if Hannah wanted to pay for this, she can do uh, subscriptions and say, add a new price. It's going to be $20 a month recurring with zero trial days. Boom. So now it's, you have to pay to join. You can add branding. You can add links. You can have people fill out membership questions before they join. Save. Done. So how do I invite people to this group? Get people to pay me. So check this out. We go into people and click the button invite. You can invite people just by putting in their name and email, or you can grab this invitation link and check this out. If I just send people this link, well, I'm already logged in, so it doesn't count. But if I send people this link, they're going to be invited to it where they can then sign up, pay, join. I did that, what, in like two minutes? So don't tell me you're not tech savvy. That's easy. Um, yeah, so Hannah, that um, what I just showed you is how you would do that. You can create a monthly subscription, enroll clients um, into here, and yeah, it, it's auto renewal. You can also create a community and make it where if they pay you or go through a certain workflow, in the workflow, you can now give them access to a community. So if they buy the um, dog package number four, and they automatically get a uh, tag, dog package, then they can automatically get invited to dog package community um, and do all that. Yeah, so is Mighty Network, is that a, is that a platform for courses? Okay. Yeah, I would just compare the two. Um, again, the benefit of this is, you, one, you don't have to pay or have another platform, and all their contact information is in one place. Um, so if you can export those and rebuild them on here, then that might save a lot of that confusion um, because they'd all be in the same system and they can pay. So you might just kind of look at both of those side by side. I would just maybe test out, like, build a course in here or try a couple of them and just see how it all works and flows and see if it makes logical sense to, to switch over. Um, we also were on a platform called School, S-K-O-O-L, and we had hundreds of people signed up, and we decided to make the switch to manually move over. So it, it's painful at the beginning. The time and sometimes cost at the beginning are a little bit hard just to like get everyone moved over and rebuild, but the benefit is you have it all in one place. It's your brand. You're not building someone else's platform. You're building your own platform and you can make money from it. And the money doesn't get shared with Genie Rocket, right? A lot of course providers, when you sell things on the course or you're doing a monthly subscription, you only get a percentage of that revenue and the platform gets another percentage. We don't take any of that money. It's 100% yours. If you're using Stripe or Auth.net, obviously there's the convenience fee of the credit card processing, but there's no, there's no dipping into any of that money from you making, you making money from the platform. All right. And then here's just some examples. I mean, you can have lots of different types of courses. You can see, you can have a toggle at the top here. So, you know, if, if, I don't know if you're allowed to do this as a drip bar, but even if you had like a training program, like a new employee training, you know, you could have this in here have videos in here, content in here, have helpful links to the side. So you can use this for internal training programs. You can use this for um, mastermind programs, for anything that you can think of because it's got courses, it's got community. I mean, this is pretty much like you building your own Facebook for your brands at no cost. So uh, 
sky is the limit. <laughs> as deep as you can think, you can build some cool stuff on here. Um, yep, so Hannah says, can you explain the auto renewal? I send invoices for program. Should I have a product item already made as a subscription and add that to the invoice workflow? Yeah, so, so Hannah, great question. You've got two options here. One, you could make it is if if they buy from you, like this would be a little bit difficult. Um, if they pay you for a certain product or service, then you can automatically give them access to a private community group that's a part of what they already paid for. So the, the community would be free, but it's private. And the only way they can get to it is if they've bought from you. So you could automate that. If it's an invoice and not a product, you could make it where you would just have to manually go in and either give them access or give them a tag. And then that the tag would give them access or you just manually put in their email address that would give them access. The other option is this becomes a separate fee. So once they buy from you, you say, great, you've now been invited to our uh, community. It's X amount a month. Here's where you sign up. And that just becomes another line item. So it kind of depends how you want to do it, but you could do it both ways. And guys, if you've never sold information before and the information uh, product game is new to you, don't be scared of it. What Hannah's able to do and I'm able to do, and maybe a few of you are able here to do, is people are willing to pay for how we think and the skills that we possess that we can then transfer over to them. And the best way to do that is through a course or community like this. And even better is when you're paying or someone's paying you for something that you've already recorded and produced and it lives on in perpetuity. So I just finished watching uh, some courses from a guy named Brian Tracy. He's a classic sales trainer, thought leader um, into personal growth and development. And I paid for some of his courses because these videos are easily 10, 15 years old, but he still got my money for something he recorded 10 or 15 years ago because that content was so valuable to me. So think about what knowledge or skill do you possess that is valuable to someone else? And then how can you turn that into a video, a course, or a training that people would be willing to pay for? And this is, I promise you, it is not a get rich quick scheme or else we'd all be doing it. But it's a build consistent revenue stream and you learning how to be a content producer and create great content where people start to pay you for how you think and what you know, regardless if it's live or if it's a recording. And even if you don't figure it out or it does not work as you want, you at least tried it and you know how it does work. So when you do have a brilliant idea or you do have a skill you think is worth sharing, you know how to go out there and create something like this to then sell your knowledge or expertise. And again, you can do it in multiple formats. I mean, look at all these groups I have over here. So you can start to create multiple branded groups with different intents, different videos, different strategies, give different people access to them um, with masterminds, those sort of things, and really build something special. So I hope this inspired you. Hannah, I can't wait to see what you come up with. I would love um, when you do have something I'd love to see it and maybe highlight what you've built and you can show us kind of what you've done and, and how it works. Um, with our five minutes left, I'll open it up to any other uh, Q&A. If there's any other questions that you guys have, I know we covered a lot today. We kind of bounced around, which um, I love doing. And hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this. But any other questions before we close up shop today? Awesome, Hannah. Cannot wait to see what you come up with. And guys, too, I want to make sure you you all have access to our um, community. So all of these trainings are in the Genie Rocket Training Academy. So we do all the replays here. And I mean, we, we are doing the same things that I'm teaching you guys to do, right? So... Um, if you don't already have access to it, here's a link to all of our past replays of these. If you missed some, you want to catch up on. And I'll give you a link to, to our BAM community. This is where we post 
high value weekly content that's a little bit more of like how to think like a marketer the original acronym i guess the, and the current acronym of bam is ba marketer so we talk a lot about how to think like marketers how to act like marketers how to do things that generate results and so if you you should be a member of that but if you are not or you just want to get back in there um i'll post that link in chat here as well and then you know I highly encourage just ongoing discussions there. So when you're here in BAM and you see something that is valuable, you know, comment, tell me you like it, look at stuff here and just be a part of our community. Uh, people that take actions are the ones that get results. And I love to help and promote people in our community, but I can't help you if I don't know you, if I don't know you or don't know you need help. And I'd love to get to know you guys and know how I can help. So um, I'll open it up one last time, last minute, any questions, throw it in chat. If not, make sure to use, utilize our live chat support, our Zoom support, our support, support library. For those of you that showed up live, thank you for showing up live. I love to get to jump in and look at things with you and help you. Um, think about questions for next week and come prepared with some stuff. I'm happy to pull up your account, jump in with you, help you however I can. Hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week, and I will catch you here next time. Bye for now.